Hello and welcome to my F124 driver career mode here today for part 12 for the Monaco Grand Prix and round 4 of the 2024 Formula 1 season. Coming off the back of a very mixed race in Imola, we to qualify now and this is our second running qualifying. We went for an extra one following on from the last lap that was terrible. You can see here though we found 6 tenths and that brought us up into the top five what a lap we're skipping out to the end of the session we found some time on this lap just a tenth this is our final run Come round this swimming pool and towards the end of, of the lap we've had a mighty first sector, a mighty middle sector, we've gone purple. This is one of the most perfect laps for our Monaco. Can we do the impossible? We come up to the line, we can. In just our fourth race in Formula 1, we get our first pole. Let's go to the race. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That's how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but we still race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. There is no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 metres up the hill, past the casino, and then descend towards the harbour through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of 19 corners, so don't expect to see much overtaking here today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Brown lines up on pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Leclerc, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Russell, Oscar Piastri, Norris, Stroll, Sonoda, Albert, Bottas, Joe, Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Ocon, Gasly, and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Welcome to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes. Alongside me is Anthony Davidson. Well, it's all about forgetting last time because that was a bit of a shocker. How do they change the story today? You've got to put it behind you. Whatever happened last time, I was always told as a driver, park it, forget about it. Obviously, feel the pain when it happens, but then you can't dwell on it and carry that through to the next race. So put it behind you and just crack on with this race coming your way now. Here we go then, the formation lap is underway and the track temperature looks warm. That may or may not play into some of the team's hands for today's race. As the cars come back to the grid to line up for the start of the race, each driver will be wanting to get the best start they possibly can. And they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium, failing that within the points.
Here we go then, is the Monaco Grand Prix. Can we convert this into our first win? We're racing here in Monaco, we haven't got the best start though, but Sergio Perez has. Perez gets us up to our win. Perez leads the Monaco Grand Prix. We're P2, Verstappen keeps his P3. As Lewis Hamilton tries to find a way past as we go around the casino. Can we find a way back past Perez? Just when that red ball out in front, he's gone, surely. They are on the hard tyres, we do have the tyre advantage being on the mediums. So they're going longer into the race than us, so we could actually be end up being held up by them. As we go through the lanes here, being the best camera angle on the game and Canada. Can we get a good exit here? As we go through the tunnel, can we be able to take Sergio Perez here? We're going to go for a classic Monaco move through the chicane. We've got a great exit. We're back alongside Sergio Perez. We're down the inside through to back. We will take the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. It was nearly bottled at turn one. It may still be, but the main thing is we're back out in front. With the two Red Bulls behind, they're going to be very hard to keep behind. But let's see what happens. And what happens? It's very good for us. Those hard tyres on the Red Bulls not really doing anything. We've pulled away. We're now four. We're now around two seconds up the road from the Red Bulls. We were just pulling away, pulling away, and pulling away. Ultimately, our tyres are going to go off. The mediums are going to go off before the hard. So. If we can extend this thing out and put us under the least pressure possible, then everything is good. All we need to do is keep it out of the barriers and we may have a good chance here of winning this Grand Prix. But the Red Bull here have got a big dilemma because Verstappen is quite clearly quicker than Perez at this stage of the race. But of course it's Monaco so we can't find a way through and really because of how tucked up Lewis Hamilton was, it was risky but they have dropped Hamilton now as on lap 13 our tyres were starting to go off and, they were, and the two Red Bulls were really starting to reel us back in and you can see Perez is all over the back of us again the honeymoon period in this race of pulling away only lasted a handful of laps and now we're back under pressure from the Red Bull of Sergio Perez he's having a good race for once early on after after the last couple of races in this season if we skip on to the end of lap 17 now and it's going to be time for our one minute stop okay, after the day if now, everything goes to plan this is a crucial, crucial point in the race because we can gain so much time on the Red Bulls now they can be going longer on their heads as we put the hard tyres on, on. That was a so good turn in there, mate. they're, they're going to be quicker by the end of the race but hopefully we can pull out a big enough gap where that's not going to matter and of course it's Monaco so we can make our car as wide as possible but we need to make sure we're not out in traffic and we've been beaten out by Albon there needs to be some team orders here because we're on for a win or, a, or at least a podium and he's fighting for nothing but we're going to get him down the inside it's a great move. We are past him. And we are through. And now we can get after then. Yuki Tsunoda, who is just up the road as well. Which is that we need to play quickly as possible as well to avoid us and holding our race up. We're gonna do what we did to Paris on lap one. On his inside, he's going to hold it around the outside. It's the Paris Sonoda. We give him the elbow and we are ahead of Sonoda. That's two very crucial overtakes early on in this stint for us. This is the two Red Bulls now. Perry's very much still holding up Max. They've absolutely dropped Lewis Hamilton, who's actually boxed and Red Bull tactical surely they box Max Verstappen before Sergio Perez surely that means Max is going to beat him out as he goes on to the mediums but where do we come out Perez like Max is about halfway down the pit lane and we are miles up the road we're already through turn one 
And one lap later though, this is Sergio Perez, Dex just watched the thing, we're already through, we're miles already through on Perez, but where is his teammate, there he is, Red Bull have engineered the world's biggest undercut for Max Verstappen, Perez is down to P3, Max is miles now up the road from Perez, it's lap 30, our oh, tyres weren't going off, we were looking after them lovely, you can see there. The gap now, nearly 10 seconds to back to Max Verstappen, and it weren't capturing. We weren't taking big chunks out of us. As we skip on to the final lap of this Monaco Grand Prix, the gap has been brought down by Max Verstappen, but he hasn't brought it down enough, and it is what? It's just our fourth race in Formula 1. We have mastered the hardest track. We've mastered Monaco. We round the final corner. It's taken us just four races, but we can call ourselves a Monaco and Formula 1 race winner. Oh, superb driving. That is the race win, my friend. Well done. Done it then. They've won here in Monaco with an emphatic performance and a victory they can be proud of for years to come. I mean, it looked like they were in a different category at points during the race, led every lap. I mean, what more can we say? It looks like it's time once again to hand out the silverware as the successful drivers make their way to the podium. It was a gritty performance today by Williams and they've got the race win to prove it. So we've won then our first Grand Prix in Formula 1 and what a place to do it as well. We have mastered Monaco and that's the first time a rookie has won in their debut season since the great Lewis Hamilton. Not saying we're going to be that good but that's a good stat to be a part of then. We dominated the Red Bulls, they got the strategy wrong today. I mean they engineered the best thing of getting Max ahead of Perez. It's a 2-3 for Red Bull, Max ahead of Perez. It's the first time this season Mercedes haven't been on the podium as well. George Russell isn't having the best of times either down in P9 after his win in the opening round in Australia. Our teammate Albon then is P30 and we were pit stuff ahead of him. That overtake on him was very much race critical as well as the one on Sonoda as well it was very good that we got them both in the same lap as well Pierre Gasly was bottom of the pile in the race finishing stone dead last just behind the two horses so Max Verstappen continues to lead the drivers world championship the gap now at 36 points Lewis Hamilton has overtaken Charles Leclerc and George Russell who was dropped then a stone from P2 to P3 Five. Charles Leclerc was just a point off of him after Imola and now he's miles in front of him. We've moved up into P7 inside the top 10. We were 11th. That now goes to Albon who we were one point behind. We have 30 points now though in the Drivers World Championship. Right at the bottom of the Drivers is Daniel Ricciardo. He's not putting himself in that front window very well. If he wants to go back to Red Bull at some point, if it even happens in this career mode. So in terms of the Constructors then, that win gets us up into the top five in the Constructors World Championship. Red Bull continue to extend it out though up front. They get now 37 points back to Mercedes and Ferrari complete the top three with Aston Martin just ahead of us. And there's still three team still yet to score but that's it for the monaco grand prix weekend a weekend to remember for us didn't think it would come this quick our first win in formula one but we've got that under our belt now we're having a great debut season so far and we couldn't have 
any more better momentum to take into the next race in Canada. We'll see you then. Goodbye.